Today we're comparing the Renogy Eclipse 200 watt solar suitcase, which runs $550 before taxes, and we're going to compare it to two Harbor Freight panels, which these are about $220 for the both of them. We'll hook them up to my trailer to compare on the charger on there, and also using the EcoFlow, we'll have a couple meters also as well to compare and check numbers. I got these solar panels a couple weeks ago from Harbor Freight, and I wanted to compare them to the Renogy one. After getting these out of the box, I was surprised at how well they are packaged, and also the quality looks decent. The only thing you'll find is a manual in here and your cable, which this does have an Anderson connector, which I'm actually going to switch that out for some MC4 connectors. There's not a lot of information on here except for this sticker, so if you want the specs, you have to open up the manual. You can see it's just over 5.5 amps. Now I'm going to switch these out to MC4 connectors, and if you guys would like, I can make you a video on this real quick. It's not very hard to switch these yourself and buy a little kit. Let me know in a comment down below, but while you guys are here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button for me, and ring the bell if you want to see more content coming out real soon. And they have these little kits as well. I'll leave a description in the link down below, and you can buy these kits for about 30 bucks, and it's not a bad thing to have if you are planning on doing a little bit of solar, and it doesn't take long to switch these out. It's about 10 minutes. So as we take a look at the Harbor Freight panels, the legs that come out on these are non-adjustable. So you really only get that angle or a little bit different versus the Renogy. This is a nice little setup. These arms right here, you can actually move them in and out and get this thing laying down really flat if you need to. And you can buy some other legs for the Harbor Freight ones, but that's one nice thing about the Renogy setup. It comes with a charge controller, it comes with the legs, it comes with a nice case, but we'll check out the specs. So on this particular panel, we're looking at the two lower numbers and not the upper ones because those are your open circuits which is at 21 volts and basically 12 amps. We're going to be looking at these two at 17.7 volts and about 11.3 amps. And then we'll compare it to the meters that we have on board and Harbor Freight panels. I'll even pull out my little light meter just to make sure I'm getting the optimized light for these two panels. But hey, you don't really need this thing. It's just for fun. As we take a look at the PowerWorks meter here, basically what we're going to do is compare this to the other one. So right now we're looking at about 20.4 volts. That's on an open circuit. I have it down here on my little test meter as we take a look just to compare. So we have the numbers pretty accurate as to our little cheap meter versus this expensive one. It's only off by about 0.1, which is where I see most of this stuff. It's, it's only off by about a point. So it's pretty accurate for the most part, considering that meter is expensive. So right now I have these angled in front of the sun about as good as I can. It's about, oh, 1030, almost 11 o'clock, so it's not at the peak angle yet. And as we take a look here, we'll look at the EcoFlow Delta and then hook it up to my trailer as well. And just for reference, these are about three years old, just to let you know. So as we look at our meter here at about 9.9 .9 amps, as we take a look at the expensive one here, about 9.8. And now this one here, I actually use quite a bit in some of the videos, and I just have this looped around the positive wire there. But there, you will see a little differences between these meters meters and these cheaper ones just to let you guys know but again as we take a look about 9.9 .9 amps and almost 17 volts at 167 watts there and then by the time it gets to the eco flow at about 161 and i want to show you guys a trailer later because i have a different charge controller in there just to let you guys know that it might be different than the one that's inside the eco flow delta so but we'll also compare the harbor freight panels here next so do the same thing just for fun i'll put the little meter on here to make sure i get the angle real good and now we'll do the same test so now if you look at the voltage now look at this now that's 43 volts on an open circuit same thing with looking at the meter here 43.1 versus two now we're going to basically get these angled as good as I can. And now I'll show you again what it looks like on the PowerWorks meter. So it's only coming out to about 5.3 amps. But I'll show you in a little while the difference when you hook it up to a different type of charge controller. But you have 35 volts, 188 watts. And so the higher voltage is actually better. And I'll, sh and I'll show you why here in just a minute because it is more efficient to have more voltage. But... If you look at the amperage, it's actually doing the same thing as a PowerWorks meter, and we'll take a look on the EcoFlow Delta here in just a second. So, so far, the other one does put out, oh, about 10 amps, right? So this one's only putting out 5 amps, and we're not getting as actually as quick as a charge on the EcoFlow Delta, which this can only hold about 10 amps max from a solar input versus AC input. And so now I'll show you the difference here hooked up to my trailer versus the EcoFlow. And we'll keep an eye on the amperage as far as the Harbor Freight panels and also the Renogy panels and these meters here. So we'll switch. Okay, so now it's hooked up to my trailer. I have that wired to my charge controller directly. And now as we take a quick look here, now that the sun is pretty much at peak, we're almost at 11 amps now, which is pretty much spec for these panels and about 16 volts 
and about 173 watts. So we'll take a walk over here and I'll show you guys a charge controller that I have in my uh, trailer. And also I'm charging up a big AGM battery. That's a 200 amp hour battery in there. One big solar one, not really any load on the trailer. It's at 0.3 amps. That's probably for the charge controller and a meter that I have inside. And now as we take a look, you're seeing this is the voltage coming in. That's about 15.1 volts. And look at that, almost 12 amps because the charge controller is optimizing the power coming in. And I don't have a load on the trailer currently, but I'll press this button here and I'll show you the wattage coming in real quick. And as I hit this, I'll show you here in a second. So there's the amperage again one more time. And now here's the wattage. And so at 160 watts, sometimes I, I don't know if this meter is super accurate as far as my wattage. It always seems to be a pinch low, but you gotta remember I do have a couple connections from the panels until it gets out here. But now as we do the Harbor Freight panels, take a look here again. So now look at the amperage, right? We're at about oh, almost six amps and look at the voltage, 35 volts. So these panels are doing really good, 208 watts. So these things are performing great. And now I'll show you what it looks like inside the trailer again. We'll do kind of the same little look. And as we come over here and take a look at the charge controller again, so now take a look at it. As you look at the voltage at 34.6 volts, now look at the amps. See, it's actually higher because we have more voltage. The controller can actually optimize your charging rate and give you more amps. And that's that's what you want is you want more amps because that's what's going to charge your batteries. But you need a higher voltage in order to get that. And these controllers are able to optimize it and just basically, you know, give you better charge rates. So that's why they're better to have. And I'll put a link in the description for this one below. So now you have to decide what kind of panels do you want to buy? Do you want to spend $220 and maybe modify it to put a couple little door hinges on it and then get a couple different legs? And then you'll actually get more power out of it than that Renogy one. Even though the Renogy is just slightly maybe more compact as far as its width, the height is a little higher, but, and it may even be higher quality cells, but I guarantee these Harbor Freight ones will last an easy 10 years before you see really any kind of a drop off in efficiency but so what do you guys want to spend do you want to spend 550 or about 220 let me know in the comments down below and i hope you liked the short video 